I like to remove O-rings first. The kit comes with pretty much all the O-rings you need. There's no extra. Remove that one around the connector first just to get it done. And I always just hold the bolt side and loosen the nut. Never had one break. Make sure on the bolt side that you keep the washers that are part of it right here. Make sure you don't lose any of those. Pull it right up and out. You just pull them loose, pop them out, slide it right up and off. Okay, and then you have, well, one main thing I needed to note is the orientation of this. If you notice, the top of this, bring it in here, the top where the spool valve housing is, you have this side that's more flat, and this side's got, got a slope to it. I don't worry yet there. There's a little bit of a slope here and just a little bit of a side. Make sure this flatter side here is always lined up with your your uh, oh alignment for your hold down clamp. And so that's gonna help you orient this orient this when you're building it also. Get that off. And then you want to make sure when you pull your spool valve out, your spool valve has got a fatter end than the other, and you always want it to the fatter side to be close to this when you're putting everything together. And I always pay attention to how it's oriented here. I don't know if I can stay in. And what I do before I pull that out, that spool valve, is I kind of go back and forth and I spin it to see if it's sticking. If that's sticking at all, that's where they, uh, they call stiction. That's where that'll be rough in there. And this one doesn't have any issues. It's real nice and smooth. I can just pop it back and forth. No problem. So I'm going to pull it out. kind of wiggle it out. Don't force it. Just kind of wiggle as you're pulling out. Dry it off. And right there. If you'll notice, this side here is a little bit bigger than this side. So the big side. The more flat side here on your spool valve housing. Your spool valve will always go with the fat side over here. Oh, if I can do this here. Right, there we are. Your, your fat side, which is over here by my index finger, will always slide in and go like this. Trust me, you don't want to get that mixed up. If you get it mixed up and it's opposite, you know the fat side's on the wrong side, you'll get a high pressure oil leak. I've I chased my tail so many times on one truck. I didn't pay attention to that. I learned my lesson. And uh, I don't forget it. I always pay attention now. This is a T15 Torx screwdriver. I couldn't find anything skinny enough. I just throw it on a vice grip like this. I hold the injector 
in my hand. I got screws up top, I just break it loose. Loosen them up little by little. Right there. Dark them up so you can see those. So you're going to loosen them up a little bit. Don't take them all the way out. What you want to do, kind of hold the injector and then rock that up. And it's going to start popping it loose. If you can see a little gap there. And then you loosen them up a little bit more, and you'll feel it. The spring inside here is going to start pushing the spool valve up. So, let's get it in the shot there. And what I do is I grab a hold of it and put my thumb up top. And you can see it moves a little bit. That way it doesn't shoot off. Okay. And we're loose. Okay, that was a shim. The shim doesn't really matter how it's oriented. You're just going to move it around until it lines up with the holes. There's usually always four holes. As long as you get, it doesn't matter if it's flipped over. As long as you get holes lined up when you're going back together, you're good. But you definitely want that shim there. Taking more o rings off. This o ring right here is usually rock hard. I usually just take a pick. I usually end up kind of cutting it to get it off there. Take it off like that. The o ring that's known to fail at the oil rail, where the little where the little nipple from the high pressure oil rail goes into. I just take a pick, force it in there. A lot of times this one breaks too. Yep, there it broke. Grab it, pull it out just like that. Now we've got the injector side of it. We're going to pull this piece out. This is part of the plunger inside. You got this, that just sets this aside. This one doesn't want to come out. Usually they come right out. Here we've got the plunger spring. We're going to replace that. So I just throw that to the side. We got the plunger. And it's a little hat. Some of the older injectors, I found those broken. So probably 03 to 04 and a half. I've never seen one broken on a 04 and a half to 07. Or, or well, I guess 2010 is whenever they quit in the E-Series. So I'm going to put that to the side. We'll check to make sure this slides in the plunger housing correctly. Because you can use some... I use 2000 grit sandpaper and sand that down a little bit to help. If that's sticking at all, it can cause the injector not to work properly. I'm going to take the rest of the o rings off. I just use a razor blade, take the copper washer off, just kind of bend it up. So what I'll do here is slide it in. If it'll do it for me, slide it underneath there, and just kind of tweak it up like that. Then I did both sides, if you can see. Just grab it and it pulls right off. Okay, and to break the, take the housing loose, 
from the body. So you got that outer housing right here. It unscrews from this part of the body. I take an injector hold down clamp. So if you're putting it in the truck, the engine, you go on and lock them like that. A lot of places sell the tool. It, it's not a bad idea to use the tool, but I've just always done it this way. Save some money. So I put it in upside down on a vise. Just enough to get it in there. Hold. Make sure it's enough to spin. You want to make sure it's not at an angle. It's still, the clamp's still on there. As if it was being clamped down the truck. Just clamp it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. And you're going to use a 27 millimeter socket. Goes right on there. Take a half inch ratchet. And I always kind of hold on there also. That way whenever I'm loosening it, it doesn't cock one side or the other and cause any damage to anything. So loosen up a little bit. I don't take it all the way apart. You don't want to take it all the way apart right now because all the pieces that fall out. Okay. Just take that loose. And then we're going to go back over to the bench. And you're going to hold the bottom and unscrew the top. like that. Okay. Now we're going to break it down from there. I never lay it on its side. I always leave it upright. That way I can always know where everything is. You got the injector tip. And I always, at this point, the, the I guess you'd call it the plunger inside the injector tip. I always make sure I can tap it out. If it fights me coming out and I can't get a hold of it, then pull it out. Sometimes it does that. I'll take WD-40 or something. And you've got this actual fuel hole. If we can see here. So you have the two alignment pins that are up here. And then you've got the little hole. And from the diagrams, I'm pretty sure that's the feed hole where the fuel actually comes down. And then the plunger slams down on it, injecting it into the cylinder. So since my plunger is slightly up here, I'm going to spray a little WD-40 in there. And what I'll do is I'll set it Right here, I'll take the injector body, just set it just like that. Just let it sit, that way everything soaks down in. Then I'll take my pins out, set them to the side, and I'll take the rest of this off. To put that housing to the side. And here, you have your spring. I can't remember what these are called. This piece right here on the top, you want to make sure that goes back in the same way. So the bigger end of it, the longer nipple, whatever end, needs to go into the housing. You don't want the smaller end that's actually supposed to go in the spring. You don't want it to go that way. I've learned the hard way. If you get that flipped, it won't work properly and you'll actually fill your cylinder. When you turn the key on, and your lift pump on the frame rail starts supplying fuel pressure to the engine it'll just feed the you know it'll basically push fuel straight into the cylinder and then you'll hydro lock I've had it done it's uh, it's not fun so what we'll do is just put everything on the side the spring from that 
the kit I have actually replaces that. So you just throw that to the side. It's not going to go back in. Okay, now we're getting to the what I believe is called the injector metering plates. We're going to pull those pins out. And I always, at this point, there's a ball bearing in there that if you're reusing it, you want to make sure you don't lose it. But my kit comes with one. So we're going to tip it over just like that. And so at that point, this housing, all you need, it's, there's no more pieces in it. There's no ring. And pull that other ring off. Put that to the side. Now we have our metering valves, metering plates. So I'll make sure when we're going back together, I'll explain the way they need to go. Uh, I'll also show that the place that we buy the injector rebuild kits from comes with a sheet to show how it's supposed to go back together. Uh, it's not, it doesn't explain in great detail, uh, but it's a pretty good picture to go off of. So this one right here, you can kind of see a little ball bearing right here. I just tap, falls out. You don't need the ball bearing get rid of it. Now on this one there's a little little rectangle piece. Make sure that comes out. I've never found one super dirty. I don't I don't put it in whenever I'm cleaning because I don't want to lose it. Okay so now you're completely disassembled. Okay, so we've got the injector, plunger, whatever you want to call it. So what I'll do is I'll push it back in. I'll tap this. And there, it's even come out even further than it did before. Then I can get a hold of it. it still didn't want to come out. Push it back in. And just keep working it. Oh, there we are. Comes out. And then, now we're ready to put everything in the solution. I need to clean up my workbench. Pull this up. I'll put the injector tip and this little plunger in there. Put the metering valves in there. I'll put this plunger. In there. I put the spool valve in there. Let's see, am I missing anything? Nope, that's everything I put in. So now we'll just put it down in there. Let it sit for about. I don't know, that one, that injector is pretty clean. We'll probably do 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we'll get back to building this.